Palace Intrigue now has merch. Check out the hats, t-shirts, mugs, and other great items with Palace Intrigue, Deep Crown, Good Times, Kate is Wonderful, and more. There's free shipping, and for a limited time, get 10% off with the code NEWMERCH10. Go to calaroga.com, that's C-A-L-O-R-O-G-A.com, or look for the link in the show notes. We really appreciate your support for the show. Thanks. Calaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Today is the King's Birthday Parade, also known as Trooping the Colour, a magnificent display of pageantry that celebrates the Sovereign's official birthday. The ceremony is performed by His Majesty's personal troops of the Household Division on Horse Guards Parade, with over 1,400 officers and soldiers, 200 horses, and more than 400 musicians from 10 bands and corps of drums marching and playing in unison. The officer in command of the parade, known as the Field Officer and Brigade Waiting, gives 113 words of command throughout the event. The parade route starts at Buckingham Palace, extends along the mall to Horse Guards Parade, and then returns to the palace. At the beginning of the ceremony, His Majesty the King receives a royal salute on Horse Guards Parade and a 41-gun salute fired by the King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery from the Green Park. The King then inspects his troops before the massed bands of the Foot Guards perform a musical troupe, and the escorted colour of the regiment is carried through the ranks of Foot Guards. Following the foot guards march past His Majesty in slow and quick time, the King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery and the Sovereign's Escort of the Household Cavalry ride past at the walk and the trot. The King then rides back to Buckingham Palace at the head of his guards, takes a further salute at the palace from the centre gate, and joins other members of the Royal Family on the balcony to watch a fly past, performed by the Royal Air Force. The full parade is conducted three times on consecutive weekends each year, the first occasion known as the Major General's Review, usually takes place two weeks before the King's Birthday Parade, while the second occasion known as the Colonel's Review typically occurs a week before the main event. Members of the public who wish to watch any of the parades are advised to stand on the mall or on the edge of St. James Park overlooking Horse Guards Parade from 9am. Events begin at approximately 10.20am for each parade, with the fly past taking place at 1pm on the day of the King's Birthday Parade only. The King's Birthday Parade is broadcast live on the BBC in the UK. The dress code varies for each event. The King's Birthday Parade, morning dress or lounge suit for gentlemen, equivalent for ladies, strictly no denim, shorts or sandals. The Colonel's Review, lounge suit or jacket, tie and trousers for gentlemen, equivalent for ladies, strictly no denim, shorts or sandals. The Major General's Review, attendees are encouraged to dress smartly. Serving military personnel may wear ceremonial day uniform with medals without swords or sidearms or equivalent for all events. Hats are optional, but recommended for paying compliments and protection from the sun. All eyes will be on the balcony today to see who makes the cut. Will it just be the very slimmed-down monarchy? Will Kate make an appearance? In the news.co.au, Diana Elsa writes, Join me in entering tricky territory. Kate is sick and has cancer. She therefore has exactly the same right to privacy as every other single human being and should be under no obligation to provide Hot and cold running updates about her treatment, side effects, conditional, whether she has drunk her recommended eight glasses of tap water today. But how do you balance that with the fact that she is also the Princess of Wales and one of the most visible people on the entire planet? How do you weigh up giving her the space to get well with the requirement to, at some point, say something and to provide something like an update? There is only one Kate, say her name in any town, city or regional bus depot between Double Bay and Djibouti and people will know who you are talking about. More importantly for Buckingham Palace, she is the great hope of the monarchy, if you want to be more generous towards William, at least 50% of it. Never is the Kate-shaped hole in the royal family going to be more painfully obvious than about now. The coming weeks will see a series of outings where the Princess of Wales would usually turn up and do some grade-A dazzling in a series of lovely jubbly outfits and diamonds and hats and children that would keep us, the masses, entertained and charmed for ages. There will be no more glaring moment than on Tuesday, June 25th, when King Charles and Queen Camilla host a state banquet for the Emperor and Empress of Japan, an event that would normally see Kate appear tiaraed and gowned up to absolute suck at Cinderella perfection. Not to get too philosophical, so late in the week and all, but what is the very essence of monarchy if not to sate the people with images such as exactly this? 
if not providing these sorts of dopamine hits of real-life princessing, we want, may need, a bit of that fairy tale stardust to be liberally sprinkled all over our social media feeds and news sites with a certain degree of semi-regularity. Royal expert Katie Nichol believes that while we may not see Kate today, we will see the children. She tells InStyle they've been up there several times now. They are always impeccably behaved, often entertaining, and they always seem to enjoy it. It wouldn't surprise me at all if William makes the decision to bring them. They're not working members of the royal family yet, but they will be. Prince George is a future king, so for the public to be able to see George, Charlotte and Louis on occasions like this is really quite important. Palace Intrigue will be right back. A bizarre article in the Houston Chronicle caught our eye. The headline is, Kate Middleton seeking medical treatment in Houston? British royal officials say that's false. We do spend a fair amount of time putting this podcast together and had not stumbled across this rumor. The Chronicle writes, A rumor that Kate Middleton is being treated at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston is false, according to a Kensington Palace representative. Amanda Matter shared a video Monday morning of her royal family-focused TikTok account, Matter of Fact, discussing a Reddit post that claims Middleton recently stayed at the St. Regis Houston. Matter wrote, Was visiting friends at the St. Regis this weekend and they had spoken of her being at the hotel. Has anyone else heard this? Assuming she would be here for treatment, hoping for the best outcome for the family. I think this theory about Kate and her whereabouts makes a lot of sense when you stop to think about it. Royal Insider Deep Crown joked, Miss Matta must be confused. Princess Catherine hasn't been in Houston since her Brazilian butt lift. Our insider added, look, you will have a lot more information in a few hours. Let's leave it at that. No, she has not been to Houston. MD Anderson Cancer Center representatives said the hospital is unable to comment on whether or not an individual is a patient due to patient privacy laws. And there you have it. Please email us. Our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or the app of your choice. Write us a review. Leave us five stars if you like the show. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue. Good times.